Republicans are interesting. Um, what they know is a couple of things. They know that this is insanity, and they know that every person, every member in that in that group of 106, that every one of them knows that Joe Biden won the won the election. But they're now in a political party that has an alliance with extremist militia groups, with QAnon conspiracy nuts, with nationalist groups, with white nationalist groups, with fascist groups like the Proud Boys. They are a meaningful and important part of Trump's coalition. And these Republicans stand in a coalition with those types of people. The former Republicans in the organization that we founded are inspired by how Ronald Reagan approached the contest with the Soviets. He was asked, where are you trying to get? And he said, we win, they lose. There could be no accommodation with these people. You can't accommodate the Proud Boys. You can't accommodate these racists and white nationalists. And they can't be part of a political coalition. There's only two ways to win a fight. You can win a fight through submission or through exhaustion. Submission, think Germany and Japan in 1945. Exhaustion, think the United States and Saigon in 1975. We must bring these forces, those parts of the Trump coalition, to submission through electoral defeat, which is why it's so important to maintain this broad yet fragile Biden coalition because they have to be beaten until association with them becomes so toxic that you have no chance anywhere at any time, any place in this country to win an election. And that's going to take many years. But 90 people are now gonna be looking at 106 people at the House lunch. And 106 people are extremist autocrats now. Right? They're not Republicans in any traditional sense. They've profoundly broken faith with the idea that is most central to this country, that the people are sovereign. We don't have a king here. We don't have an emperor. We don't have a military hunter. What we have here is government of the people, by the people, for the people, the world's oldest constitutional republic. And its greatest miracle is that every four years uninterrupted by civil war, by world war, by assassination, by Great Depression, the story of the country is renewed with 35 words, the presidential oath. And then our story begins again. The people renew every four years the life spring of American democracy by deciding who leads us. Until this moment, we all agreed about this. The fight in the country's history hasn't been whether this was a good idea or not. It's been about who gets to participate in it. Martin Luther King came to the Lincoln Memorial to collect a promissory note to say this belongs to us too. The American idea and ideal is for all people. That's what we now have in this country is a fundamental debate between a majority that believes that and a minority that does not. But that minority, because of redistricting and gerrymandering and the structure of the Electoral College, runs the race with a significant head start. So we are in very, very dangerous hours. We now have an internal threat to freedom and liberty in this country, the likes of which we have never ever seen in our history. 106 members of Congress today decided to do away in essence with American democracy. It was as historic a vote that has ever taken place under the Capitol Dome. And without question, in our entire history, there has never been a more un-American vote than the one cast today. The competition in American politics is now between a Democratic Party, meaning a party that believes in democracy versus an autocratic party. And we've never seen that. When you see that many members of Congress breaking faith with their oath to overturn an election because they don't like a result, we're off the reservation to a place that we might not be able to get back on it from. We're one election away.
from losing the country to people who no longer believe in democracy.